Have you ever felt the excitement of new love? I mean, when it first gets started and it's so exciting, you think about the other person and get happy in your head just with the very thought of them. And when you see them, maybe you get the butterflies in your stomach and all you want to do is be with them, spend time with them, talk with them, listen to them. Well, is that really love or is it infatuation? And if it really is love, is it going to last like that or is it going to change in some other fashion? Well, stay tuned and as we go through here, I'll give you a free resource at the end if you'd like and tell you about something else you can find to find out how to know whether it is love <laughs> and if so, make it long lasting love. Well, people typically call it infatuation. As a matter of fact, sometimes I use the same phraseology. And infatuation means the early stages when the adrenaline is pumping and all kinds of chemicals are taking place inside your own brain. And if the other person feels the same way toward you, <laughs> those chemicals are happening in his or her brain as well. That's why, believe it or not, it's called chemistry. You see a person that you find yourself attracted to. Uh, maybe in this day and time, you don't even see them. You actually read what they have to say or hear their voice on the internet. But in some fashion, you're attracted to them and you won't ever be able to figure out all the reasons that you find yourself so immediately attracted to that person. And if they're immediately attracted to you, they won't understand all the reasons for it either. But when that chemistry takes place, oh, it's exciting. It's euphoric and it's like this, this is something beyond anything anybody else has ever imagined. Nobody has ever been in love like this, but it doesn't last that long. Those brain chemicals will begin to subside, at least not from the level they're in now. They won't be there all the time. They're going to subside. And that infatuation, while intense and fantastic and wonderful, is relatively short-lived. Now, I don't mean it lasts just minutes. It could last weeks. It could last months. But in the, in the scheme of life, <laughs> it just doesn't happen that long. And so you say, well, then is it a kind of love? Yes, it is. In the social sciences, we study love in all kinds of ways. We can talk about love that's called companionate love, romantic love, fatuous love, empty love, passionate love, uh, liking love, and, and many, many more. And all those are studied and we have models where we can look at this and look at that to see basically what kind of love it is. And infatuation is indeed a part of love. Now, the upside is it feels fantastic. The downside is, as I've already said, it doesn't last that long long. And therefore, if you want to have a longer lasting relationship, you can't stop with the infatuation. As a matter of fact, there are some sociologists out there who study it and say, well, that kind of love, and sometimes they actually call it lust, that kind of love, that infatuation love, that lust love is designed by the universe, by nature, whatever they believe in, to be something that draws people together, but it was never intended to keep people together because if we stayed in that euphoric state, our productivity would go to practically nothing. You say, well, does that matter? Sure it does. If you want to eat, <laughs> if you want to be able to have clothes on your body, you see somebody has to plant the crops, somebody has to raise the crops, somebody has to harvest the crops, and somebody has to raise the animals, etc. And if we stayed in that euphoric sensation of infatuation, if it lasted a lifetime, we wouldn't do that. We would be so unproductive that the human race couldn't bear its own weight. We wouldn't have enough to eat, enough things to sustain us. Well, then how do you turn it into a longer lasting love, one that can last forever? Well, there's a guy named Robert Sternberg who's done a lot of study about that. Dr. Sternberg is absolutely brilliant. And he says that if you want to have love, like between a husband and wife, a man and a woman, that can last a lifetime, it's going to have three basic components intimacy, passion, and commitment. Now, passion, you probably understand, except think about it a little bit broader than what you probably think it is. It does have a sexual dimension, but it's a craving for oneness. I want to share my life with you and you share your life with me. And you tend to feel that kind of passion in the infatuation. Now that passion will change with time as the relationship either fades or deepens. So these other two things he talks about, intimacy, that means into me see. And it takes a while to develop. It means we both get to the point where we can be 
open and transparent and vulnerable to the other person and feel that the other person is doing the same so that we, in essence, let down the walls in front of us to see who each of us really is, what we really think, what we really feel, what we really believe, what we really do. And as we then accept each other in that, then we develop a kind of love that literally can last a lifetime. So infatuation may bring you together, but if you just stop there without doing the work, yes, believe it or not, there's actually work to it, to develop intimacy, then at some point, the infatuation just goes away. Now, I mentioned commitment, not having much time to talk about it now, but it develops slowly as well, just as intimacy does. And the commitment is what keeps you together in the bad times. And bad times always come. So, what's the difference in infatuation and a love that lasts a lifetime? Work. <laughs> not the kind of work where you go out and dig a ditch, but the kind of work where that you learn how to be open to each other, to understand each other and accept each other. And it can be work because sometimes you won't like what the other person thinks or feels or does or believes. But by finding a way to blend those things together, even when you differ, you can be deeply in love for the rest of your life. We call it the love path. Now, if you've developed a long lasting love, we'd love to hear how you did that. In the comments below, just right there, this is how we develop from fatuation into a deep, long lasting love. We'd love to hear your comments about that. And we also would like to give you a free ebook about that, particularly if you feel that maybe you guys might have had intimacy at one point, but perhaps it's fading. And we call it how to get your spouse to fall back in love with you. How to get your spouse to fall back in love with you. It's a free ebook you can have. And the link is on your screen right now. Or if you're listening by audio, we'll find the link in the show notes below. Now, what's the point of all this? Infatuation is exciting, but it really doesn't last that long. If you want a love that lasts a lifetime, you don't ride the emotional roller coaster. You learn how to be transparent and open to love each other deeply. And that's the love that lasts the rest of your life.